Okay, let's just get right to it now. So I was testing this machine, oiling it, getting it ready for my semester next year in January. I've got all my machines I've been working on and this struck me as really interesting because I'm so used to sewing vinyl on my computer machines and my industrial machines with success. Uh, but I've never had success sewing with a universal size 12 on any of my computer machines. I usually always have to use a leather needle. And this is really interesting. So when I was testing, look at this. Look how thick that is. Look how beautiful that turned out on this mecha old mechanical machine. The other difference is it doesn't have the drop-in bobbin case. It's got the traditional uh, bobbin below, which really makes a difference in the way that it the, the thread works. I'm lost for words because I'm not a true mechanic. I just tinker. But I know I remember years ago listening to people in the industry saying the drop-in bobbins do not allow you to do a lot of things that the bottom bobbins will do. Okay? I'll show you what the bottom bobbin is in a photograph here. Okay, so here is the needle I'm going to be using. Size 80, 12, universal. Now for all you newbies, in case you don't know, 80 is the European size, 12 is the American size. So when you're on the sewing groups on Facebook and people are asking about needles, if someone says use a size 12, ask them what type of needle. The type of needle is universal. Because a lot of people don't tell you the type of needle. There are all different types of needles and it's important to understand. So like I said, normally I would use a leather needle to sew vinyl on my computer sewing machines. But this one, it took an 8012 universal. All right, so this is straight stitch. I got just a center needle position. I'm going to fold this over, so I'm going to do first, I'm going to do two layers. I have a Teflon foot on here. Okay. And I got my stitch length at 3.5. All right, let's give it a shot. Also, listen to how quiet this machine sells. As I mentioned in my video shorts that I did, some older machines, when you press on, or even newer mechanical machines, when you press on the foot pedal, it makes a roaring noise before it begins, like that. This one doesn't. Listen. See that? Beautiful. I'm going to go around this whole piece. The one thing I do miss is my knee lifter. And I think sometimes that we forget about the quality of these mechanical machines because we're all into the push button bells and whistles of the modern machines. Now I think there's one brand machine that's mechanical like this that has a knee lifter. It's a modern version. I think, don't, don't um, quote me, but look, you have to look online. I think Bernina includes a knee lifter with their mechanical machine. And I'm talking about the mechanical machines that offer some decorative stitches like this machine. All right, let's take this out and look. I'm just using construction dual duty Coates and Clark thread. Just testing regular construction thread for this. All right, here's the top and here's the back. Look at that. Look at that beautiful stitching. Wow, beautiful. No skip stitches. All right, let's do the ultimate now. So that was two, let's do four layers. Let's sew four layers. Now, I remember a long time ago when I was first learning how to sew, they always said if you want the best stitch, the best straight stitch, to sew in the left needle position. So let's do that. Let's set our needle to the left needle position, and I'm going to sew from this side. And let's see how it turns out. 
Also notice I did not have to turn the flywheel to get this going. Now the purpose of me doing this video is to show all you newbies out there and you novice people that if you want to make little zip pouches out of vinyl, you don't have to have an expensive machine. You don't have to have a commercial walking foot machine. Okay, there is the top. See, there's the top. And there's the bottom. Now I'm going to increase my stitch length all the way up. This one only goes up to four. The stitch length on this machine only goes up to four. So let's do that again. Let's sew this again. And I'm going to sew it just right there. This is four layers of vinyl. That, that is about equivalent to when you're making those little zip pouches. This is perfect so all you beginners will have access to making things. Alright, so there's the new one. And let's look at the back and there's the back. Let me get this right out of the way. Here's the back. No skip stitches. Isn't that wonderful? Should we try folding it over and see if it'll take eight layers? Should I push it? Let's try it. If it'll fit under here, it won't fit. See, there's something to teach you. If it doesn't fit under the presser foot, don't force it. But this is great. I mean, I wanted to demonstrate to you that, you know, in the beginning, don't rule out certain things. Don't rule out these old mechanical machines, even the newer mechanical machines that you could pick up, because they, they have a metal frame. They have an all-metal frame. They have what I believe is called an oscillating bobbin on the bottom. Um, yeah, and they give you a few decorative stitches where you can do your clothing for blind hem, overcasting stitch, buttonhole. You know, uh, let me show you. Let me show you here. Try to move my camera here. So there, you see you've got several decorative stitches. You've got your utilitary stitches. You've got your stretch st stitches for doing knits. And that's all it is right here. See that? You've got your dial to dial the stitch, stitch length and stitch width, and then needle position right here. And then your reverse button right here. And your tension is on top right there. That's your tension. So yeah, I mean, this is... Um, this is something for the newbies to understand, even you veterans out there, you know, um, that you can accomplish things and learn in the beginning on a machine like this, and you can work your way up. So if you want to use thicker thread, if you want to try thicker thread with, with a bigger needle, um, if you're going to be doing a lot more of these and you want to do something, you know, more intense, then you'll go to like an industrial walking foot machine. Or you can use other, other machines. You just have to experiment and try. And don't be afraid to understand needles. You know, like I said, when I try using this needle on some of my uh, computer sewing machines to do this, it was skipping stitches because I had that drop in bobbin on all of them. It wasn't working well. But this worked great on this mechanical machine. On my other machines, I have to use a leather needle, usually a size 18. So don't be afraid to experiment. Part of sewing is all about discovering things also on your own. And there's one thing that sewing teaches you. And I say this in all my groups and all my classes. Sewing teaches you how to be self-sufficient and independent. And what that means is, when you're home and you understand sewing, you learn sewing, you can learn to think for yourself and try different things to see what works. You don't have to write everybody all the time and say, well, oh, can, am I allowed to do this? Am I allowed to do that? No, you know what? You don't need anyone's permission. Experiment on your own and you'll discover. And one thing that we learn in life, if someone gives you the answer for something, you're not going to remember it as well as if you opened up your instruction manual to look it up and read it and you seem to retain it longer than someone giving you an instant answer. And that's true in everything. So don't be afraid to experiment, try different things, and don't limit your machine. It just needs tuning to something else. Like I said, this machine for standard construction thread, it's fine with 8012. My other machines, they require a leather needle. So I'm going to turn the flywheel by hand. And we're going to see, okay, see, according to 
what we read, this is oscillating because you can see it moves like halfway up and then goes backwards. See that? Whereas a rotating one, has, from what I read online, goes all the way around. It just continuously goes all the way around. So this is must be oscillating. I would call this an oscillating bobbin system. So gives you a little more insight into different ways of using machines and needles and vinyl. All right, now just for the heck of it, keeping the same universal needle in here, I'm going to see if it will sew through this upholstery weight fabric. Leather, leather. This is real leather. Now, I would never tell you to do this as something that you would want to sell because you really, really need to have a skiver to thin out your leather. And I've, I've already explained that in some of my videos about why a skiver is necessary. It thins out the leather so when you sew your seam together, you don't have that bulkiness. So when you turn it out, it's not going to be thick and bulky like that. But just for a test, let's just see if this needle will go through this leather and not skip any stitches. You ready? And look at that. I didn't even have to turn the flywheel. You know how some mechanical machines you got to turn the flywheel to get torque? Okay, now, see, it's coming up to something thick here, which is right here, and it wouldn't go. So perhaps using a walking foot will help this more. You know, sometimes I think that we forget about this needle with some of our projects because this is used for basic standard construction on, on um, woven fabrics. All right, let me see. Let's see what it does. All right, here's the top, which looks really nice. And guys, this is dual duty Coates and Clark thread. All right. Here's the back. No skip stitches. Look at that. Absolutely no skip stitches. This is leather. This is upholstery weight leather. So for all those little projects you may have, maybe if you're making key fobs and you're putting two pieces of leather together, and what I suggest you do is you cut your edges real straight, then you get some edge finishing paint you get that from your local leather supply stores and you paint the edges you'll have a beautiful looking key fob because I know a lot of you are doing embroidery on vinyl and leather so if your machine will embroider on leather like this one single layer of leather um, then you could just top stitch around it with this standard construction thread and see how it works right okay just a little demo to give you more insight Okay, everybody, take care. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to bring bringing you more videos as I always do. All right? All right, love you all. Bye. Bye.